Number 8. The London and Northeastern Railway P2 Mikados. Just as the 462 Pacific type is synonymous with high-speed express passenger trains in the 20th century, the 282 Mikado type is just as so, with either mixed traffic or purely freight work. Now, there are far too many classes of 2A2 Mikados in North America for me to name without me growing a beard. But what I can say is that the 2A2 wheel arrangement has had its success in other countries around the world. These include the SNCF 141R class in France, the DRB 41 class in Germany, the China Railways SYs, in which two are currently preserved and running here in the US, the JNR Class D51s in Japan, and the Victorian Railways and NX classes in Australia. However, the 282 wheel arrangement has had pretty little success in the United Kingdom compared to many other countries around the world. In fact, there are only three known classes of 282s that were built in the UK, not including narrow gauge or miniature locomotives, that is. One class that is brought up more than any other is the LNER Gressy Class P2 Mikados, with six built at Doncaster between 1934 and 1936. They were designed to pull heavy express trains on the rugged route between Edinburgh and Aberdeen in Scotland, and as they were pulling Scottish express trains, they were given famous names from Scottish lore. They were numbered and named 2001 Cargo the North, 2002 Earl Marischal, 2003 Lord President, 2004 Mons Maig, 2005 Thane of Fife, and 2006 Wolf of Badenoch. Also, as seen in the pictures, some of them were streamlined after Gresley's famous Class A4 Pacifics. These engines were also subject to a few experiments as well. When number 2001, Cargo the North, was first built in 1934, it was first fitted with lens type rotary cam actuated poppet valve gear, but was then later refitted with the conventional wall shards valve gear, which the rest of the class would be built with from then on. However, only seven years into their working lives, the P2 Mikados were temporarily retired between 1943 and 1944, as their two-way two-wheel arrangement and long wheelbase turned out to be unsuitable for the express route they were assigned to. They would later return to service, renumbered 501 to 506, but not as the Gresley P2 Mikados they were first built as. Instead, Edward Thompson decided to have all six rebuilt into the horrible-looking Class A2-2 Pacifics. <laughs> this class definitely serves as a good example as to why Edward Thompson is so disliked by the British railfan community. Just look at it! In order to reuse three of the original connecting rods for this class, Thompson had to move both external cylinders back to the point where they would be set behind the rear set of leading wheels, as in completely behind the front leading bogey. Now, having the outside cylinders moved back has been done before, on Churchwood Star Class 10-wheelers and one-off Great Bear Pacific, and on Collett's Castle and King Class 10-wheelers on the Great Western, as well as on Stanier's Prince's Royal Class Pacifics on the LMS, but this is just taking things too far. Figuratively and literally. Could this class get any worse? Actually, yes it did. These engines actually performed worse in service as Thompson's A2-2 Pacifics than they previously did as Grizzly's P2 Mikados. The A2-2s began to be withdrawn from service in November 1959, and by July 1961, although none of these former LNER Thompson eyesores survived to this day, sadly, neither did Grizzly's Class P2 Mikados. Fortunately, however, we're not only getting just one, but two brand new P2 Mikados, a replica of one of the once existing engines, and a new build of the next member of the class. The replica P2 will be that of Class Pioneer number 2001, Cargo the North, built by the Doncaster P2 Locomotive Trust, as it appeared after it was modified in 1938 with Walshart's valve gear and Gresley's A4 style streamlining. The other P2 Mikado that will be the next member of the class is being built by the A1 Steam Locomotive Trust, number 2007, and officially named Prince of Wales. Starting back in 2013, a great amount of progress has already been made over the past 9 years, and the new engine looks just about complete. 
Also, one interesting fact about this new build project is that one of its volunteers was in fact James May, the former host, along with Jeremy Clarkson and Richard Hammond, of the popular BBC TV series Top Gear, and now the host of their Amazon video series The Grand Tour, who made the first component for the new P2 Mikado. While it's most likely that 2007, Prince of Wales, will be completed much before the replica of number 2001, Cockle the North, at least it won't be too much longer until at least one of these engines is running rail tours on home eastern region territory once again. Number 7 The Central Railroad of New Jersey's 462 Pacifics the Central Railroad of New Jersey had a total of 21 462 Pacifics, divided into four different classes, built by Baldwin from 1918 to 1930. The CNJ based the design for their Pacifics on the Reading Railroad's G1 class Pacifics, but were heavier, had larger cylinders, and slightly smaller driving wheels. They were built primarily for fast express or commuter passenger trains. However, three of the CNJ specifics, G3S class numbers 831, 832, and 833, were chosen to head the railroad's deluxe passenger train, the Blue Comet. The Blue Comet service was inaugurated on February 21, 1929, and operated between Jersey City and Atlantic City, New Jersey, managing an average time of three hours. The train itself usually consisted of a baggage car, a combination or a combine car, a passenger car that's half baggage and half coach for those who don't know, some coach cars, a dining car, and a rear observation car. Each car was named after a different comet, hence the train's name, and were painted Packard blue with a long cream band from end to end, and the train's name painted in gold lettering on top. The three CNJ Pacifics chosen to head the Blue Comet were also painted Packard blue, with cream lining on their wheels, cylinders, and tenders. They also had a nameplate of the train's name in gold lettering mounted just below the feed water heater in front of their smoke boxes. The Blue Comet became an instant success following its introduction. However, that success fell just as quickly as it rose following the Great Depression later that year, which had its effect on all of America's railroads. In the end, the Blue Comet only lasted about 12 years, with all services finally ending on September 27, 1941. The CNJ Pacifics continued their work on high-priority passenger trains until they were later downgraded to secondary services as diesels began to take over. These engines were then retired, then scrapped between 1948 and 1955. None of them survived the preservation. Even though it only lasted about 12 years, the Blue Comet still retains a bit of a legacy to this day, from scale models made by Lionel and MTH Trains to the CGI Pairware add-on pack for Trains Railroad Simulator, or just Trains for short, released back in 2009. Also, even though none of the CNJ Pacific survived, some of the passenger cars from the Blue Comet did make it into preservation, restored for either stag display or for carrying passengers on tourist railroads. In fact, the only locomotive that's pulled the Blue Comet that's still around today is the CNJ Camelback 442 Atlantic No. 592, preserved on stag display at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum. Number 6 The Pennsylvania Railroad T1 Duplexes the T-1 duplex 4444s were the final steam locomotives to be built for the Pennsylvania Railroad. They were the brainchild of famed industrial designer Raymond Lowy, with a total of 52 built between 1942 and 1946. The two first prototype engines, numbered 6110 and 6111, were built by Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1942, and the remaining 50, numbered 5500 to 5549, were built between 1945 and 1946, with the first 25 built by the Pennsylvania's main shops in Altoona, and the remaining half by Baldwin. Before the T1s came to be, the final steam locomotives to be built for express passenger trains on the Pennsylvania Railroad were their iconic K4 Pacifics, with a staggering 425 built between 1914 and 1928, with 350 built by the Pensies Junior Shops and 75 built by Baldwin. 
As trains began to grow longer and heavier during the 1930s, it soon became hard for the K-4s to cope. As a result, they were often seen double-heading trains, and sometimes even triple-heading, as there were plenty of them to go around throughout the Pennsylvania system, and this soon became a normal routine. However, it was expensive to have two sets of crews operating two engines for just one train. Also, the Pansy's passenger locomotive roster began to look pretty outdated, as other railroads were developing larger and more powerful engines for their passenger trains. During the mid to late 30s, the PRR began to try and develop new express passenger steam locomotives. As they did, Baldwin had persuaded the Pansy to adopt their latest innovation, the duplex steam locomotive. Basically, duplex locomotives had two sets of driving wheels, just like articulated locomotives. However, there was one fundamental difference between the two. While articulated locomotives had the front set of driving wheels on a separate swiveling frame in order to negotiate tight curves, duplex locomotives had both sets of driving wheels fixed to one rigid frame. The first duplex locomotive to be developed for the Pennsylvania was the one-off experimental S1 6446 No. 6100 built by Altoona in 1939. The S1 did prove to be very sleek, powerful, and fast. However, many problems arose from its design. For starters, its long length made it pretty difficult to negotiate tight curves, so it was restricted from most of the Pennsylvania system. Another major flaw with the S1 was that it was found to be extremely prone to violent wheel slip due to its 6446 wheel arrangement, as most of the engine's weight was bared down on the leading and trailing wheels instead of the two sets of driving wheels, which reduced traction. This was a pretty big issue, as it could cause mechanical damage if this occurred well up to speed. The S1 would then later be retired in 1946, then finally scrapped in 1949. Due to the flaws from the S1, Baldwin went back to the drawing board to design a better duplex locomotive suitable for series production, and that led to the development of the T1 duplex. When the two prototypes were built and tested in 1942, they both received glowing reports, resulting in the next 50 built by Altoona and Baldwin three to four years later. While in service, they saw work between Harrisburg and St. Louis, pulling some of the Penzi's first-class passenger trains, including the railroad's premier express train, the Broadway Limited. They were capable of achieving 80 to 100 miles per hour pretty easily. However, just like the S1 number 6100 before them, the T1s were also prone to violent wheel slip, either when starting up or up to speed. Also, these locomotives were equipped with Franklin Poppet valve gears, which did help to increase their speed, as they gave very accurately timed steam deliveries to the pistons inside the cylinders. However, they were found to be quite finicky in nature, as they were unable to take the stress of high speeds when the T1s reached more than 100 miles per hour. In fact, the T1s were so powerful that if the engineer, or driver, was not careful on the throttle, or regulator, it could cause wheel slip while the train was traveling up to 100 miles per hour, which could cause damage to the poppet valve gear. But despite their problems, the T1s continued their work on the Pennsylvania's high-priority passenger assignments until the introduction of the EMD E7s and E8s. By then, the T1s were downgraded to fast mail and express passenger trains until the Penzi had them retired from service in 1952 and 1953, after which scrapping of the T1s commenced. By 1956, the T1 duplexes were no more. But their story doesn't end there. Starting in 2014, a non-profit group known as the T1 Steam Locomotive Trust or just a T1 trust for short, has been building the next member of the class, number 5550, which is expected to be completed sometime around 2030. One fact about the T1 project that's caught my interest is that it's the first new build of a 20th century era steam locomotive to be built in the United States. All other previous new build steam engines here in the US are all replicas of historic 19th century era locomotives. These include the early Baltimore and Ohio locomotives, such as the Tom Thumb and the Lafayette, built back in 1927 for the Fair of the Iron Horse, held to celebrate the centenary, or 100th anniversary, of the B&O, the Best Friend of Charleston, built in 1928, the John Bull, built in 1940 by the Pennsylvania Railroad, 
even though the original one is still around today on display at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. The two Golden Spike 440 Americans, the Central Pacific No. 60, Jupiter, and Union Pacific No. 119, built back in 1979 by O'Connor Engineering Laboratories for the Golden Spike National Historic Site at Promontory Summit in Utah, Jupiter's sister locomotive, number 63, Leviathan, currently dressed up as Pennsylvania, number 331, built back in 2009 by Cloak Locomotive Works, and most recently, Northern Central Railway, number 17, York, also built by Cloak in 2013. And currently being built, around the time of this video, a replica of 260 Mogul, number 1, Lion, the first locomotive from the Vadis, Virginia, and Truckee Railroad. Quite a few major components have already been completed or acquired for the new T1. The group has even managed to acquire an original Pennsylvania Railroad 16-wheel long-haul tender, which originally came from one of the Penzies M1 Class 4A2 mountains. As of the making of this video, work is currently being done on the new duplex locomotive's boiler, which is currently being built at Continental Fabrications, located in St. Louis, Missouri. Number 5. The Pennsylvania Streamlined K4 number 3768. As I just said in the previous spot, there were a total of 425 Pennsylvania K4 Pacifics built by the Penzies Juniata Shops and Baldwin between 1914 and 1928. Today, only two K4 Pacifics have been preserved, number 3750 on static display at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania in Strasburg, Pennsylvania, and number 1361, which was restored back in 1987 for use on mainline excursions, but was taken out of service one year later due to mechanical issues. Today, it currently resides at the Railroaders Memorial Museum in Altoona, Pennsylvania, undergoing a massive rebuild back to operational condition. One other K4 that stood out from the rest was number 3768, one of the 350 built by Altoona in 1920. What makes number 3768 stand out from the rest was that it was the first steam locomotive on the Pennsylvania Railroad to be officially streamlined back in 1936. Its streamlined casing, again, was designed by Raymond Lowy, which concealed most of the locomotive's functional components, giving it a very sleek and aerodynamic appearance. As a result, the 3768 was nicknamed the Torpedo. At first, the 3768 was painted bronze after receiving its new streamlining, but was then later repainted into the Pennsylvania Railroad's dark green livery, which in my opinion is a much better look for it. While streamlined, it often headed many of the Penzies named passenger trains, and for a time, it even became the preferred locomotive for the Broadway Limited. Number 3768 also took part in the New York World's Fair in 1939, being showcased along with many other noteworthy locomotives, including being featured in Railroads on Parade, a special presentation showing the attending locomotives in action, all while telling, and playing, the history of America's railroads. Number 3768 even got the star in a few movies as well, such as the 1941 Hal Roach comedy Broadway Limited, albeit renumbered 3763, and starring alongside Pennsylvania D16SB Class 440 American number 1223, the Palm Beach Story comedy in 1942, the 1943 crime film Spy Train, and the film noir movie The Great Flammarion in 1945. However, its streamlining was later removed sometime in the mid-40s, as it got in the way of central maintenance, after which it continued to work on regular passenger trains until it was retired in October 1953, then scrapped. This is another streamlined steam locomotive I would like to see someone build a full-scale operating replica one day. Not only because of what I said about surviving American streamlined steam locomotives back when I talked about the Hiawatha engines, but also because of how so many K4s were built, yet only two managed to make it into preservation. So it probably wouldn't hurt to have a replica of a once existing K4 built. But even if they don't, at least we still have the scale models and the payware model for TRS made by K&L Trains to help keep the Penzi streamlined engine's legacy alive. Also, just to add as a fun fact, number 3768 even served as the basis for Gordon when he was streamlined as the shooting star in the 2016 Thomas & Friends special, The Great Race.
As you can see here, the resemblance between number 3768 and Gordon as Shooting Star is pretty similar. Well, except in the tender, that is.